I am Don from Don Drones On. Super excited. We're getting our Starlink system tomorrow. And while this isn't a drone video, it will allow me to upload my drone videos a lot faster. So let's check out the, the speed I'm getting now on my Bell Canada landline, which comes across up the road from the other end of the lake and across the lake under underwater behind me and up here to the cottage. So we'll uh, see what it's like. Here's our speed before switching over. This is on our existing Bell Canada landline. Might take a while. Here we go. 15 millisecond ping is actually pretty darn good. Okay, this is about typical. So 2.29 download. Oh, looking like a great upload. Almost there. Zero point five five. That's uh, that's pretty good <laughs> for what we've been experiencing. So uh, we'll see what it is once we get Starlink installed. And I'll show you where we're gonna be planting this thing. It's Plan A anyway. So Plan A is to attach it to that satellite dish mount right there. It's an old Express View Bell Express View satellite dish mount. I took the satellite down or the dish down last weekend and the idea is that we'll run that cable down down the wall down here and drill a hole where the old wire is drill a bigger hole for the the new um, the new cable now i'm hoping that's a good spot you can see there's trees up there but there's also a lot of sky hopefully that'll work because plan b is a lot harder <laughs> in terms of access. Plan B is to mount it up there somewhere. And that's going to be a little tougher to get to ladder-wise, but uh, certainly doable. But there's trees here too, so I don't know. Hey Gary, how are you? Good, how are you? What have we got here? Just what you always wanted. All right, you can just leave her right there. Thank you very much. You're Have welcome. a great day. <laughs> okay, so we're going to open the box and see what's going on. So I got my knife. As expected, IKEA instructions. Put the dish, connect it up, connect it up to your Wi Fi. Okay, so here it is, very simple. My big question was whether or not. Uh, my big question is whether or not the mounting bracket would be in here. I don't see it. I suspect it's not here. So I've got a plan B for that. I've got the tripod. Basic ground mount. What's the next piece here? There's... Transformer. Already plugged in. I'm just going to unplug that. And the router. Very slick looking. And a big pile of wire and the dish itself, which appears to be underneath another piece of plastic. Ooh, it's hefty, that's for sure. And there it is. Very, 
Very cool. Basically flat in that direction. Slight curve on the back and the mounting mounting business. All right, so we're just going to put that down and get ourselves ready to climb up on the roof. So I did order the pole mounting adapter device. It's basically a little small pipe that has uh, that allows you to connect this to a pole uh, because I, I, as I mentioned I'm attaching this to an existing Bell Express View mounting thing um, but anticipating that it wouldn't arrive at the same time what I've got is an, a, a temporary solution for this looks like the dish actually does fit into the top here it goes into that so I'm going to drill a couple holes on here for those button securing pieces to go in and we'll be away to the races. So I'll just show you what I've done. Um, the, the satellite dish mount itself has two little button uh, push button things that fit pop in and what I've done on my in my mounting bracket here I've drilled two half inch holes that one ended up being a little elongated from where I was drilling through straight through to the other side and the mounting piece fits perfectly into there it was a little bit sloppy so as you can see i just put it in a vise and squeezed it a little bit and now it's a very nice snug fit into this bracket that used to be an express view bracket so i'm going to put this back up get it mounted vertically and we should be away to the races okay so half inch holes and it does go into the end of that all right okay here we go so it's not too bad as long as you're carrying it kind of upright and close to your body. All right, here we go. Very secure. That's that's a relief. That was ridiculously easy. Well, my video recording of the next few steps was pretty terrible, so I'll just describe it instead. To check that my plan A dish location was okay, and to test the overall system, I plugged everything in temporarily. It's very simple. Just plug the long black cord from the dish into the transformer box, which is also a power over Ethernet injector, by the way. Then plug the transformer into the wall and wait about a minute. The first thing that happens, which is so cool, is that the dish automatically aims itself to the correct direction. And once it connects to satellites, the white flashing light on the router goes solid. And that's it. While it's doing that, Follow the directions on the Starlink app on your phone to name and set up your Wi-Fi network. It's super easy. So as luck would have it, plan A did not work at all. We were experiencing far too many outages because of the trees blocking the signal to the satellites. Um, you, you basically need 100% clear sky roughly towards the north. Um, so I've moved the, the dish to the other end of the cottage where it's uh, more clear, a little farther away from those trees, and I'll show you where that is. So the dish is up there. There it is. Sorry about the wind. Um, but you can see it's, it's mounted using the same technique. Uh, I haven't pinned down that cable yet. It's just been too cold, too windy. And it comes all the way down here. And I drilled a 7 8 inch hole. Theoretically, you can get away with 3 quarters, but I found a little bit bigger gave me a little more clearance. I've just got some plumber's putty stuck in there until the warmer weather when I can do a proper patch-up job. Just make sure you have a, a drip loop there so water doesn't tend to uh, try to get through that hole. Okay, once it was all strung through the basement and connected all up again, how did it perform? Well, a quick reminder of what we get with the Bell landline. Yep, 2.3 down and 0.5 up. Just a dribble. So that's the bogey to aim for. Here we go.
Yeah, nearly 100 megabits down and 12 up. And it's often better than that. It does vary, but man, is it fast. Now for some nerdy bits. Out of the box, the system is basically a Wi-Fi emitter. If all you need is a Wi-Fi connection, you're done within minutes of plugging in the system. It's amazing. But I'm sure many of you have more elaborate setups, like me, and there is some accommodation for that. On the back of the router, there is one aux port, which you can use to connect to your LAN, replacing whatever internet source you currently have. Not bad, except there are currently some limitations. The worst one is that the Starlink router does not support static IP addresses or port forwarding. So, for example, I can't access my security cameras when I'm away from the cottage. My workaround for this at the moment is to ditch the Starlink router box itself, connect the internet feed directly into one of the two WAN ports on my own router, use my old Bell Canada connection as a second WAN connection, and it does have port forwarding supported, and then I've, I've set load balance on the router to 99% on the Starlink and 1% on the Bell Canada. And this has worked perfectly, aside from the fact that I'm now paying for two internet connections. At least one of them is fantastic. A more positive nerdy bit is this statistics monitor that I'm showing you. And you can access that when you do have the Starlink router connected. It shows you 15 minutes of real-time performance, including little outages classified as obstructions, no satellites, and beta downtime. It also shows you latency, download and upload usage, and signal-to-noise ratio. A bit addictive for nerds, but quite cool. These short little outages, like this one here, maybe a second or two, are a big downer. If you are on an audio or video call like Zoom or MS Teams, you will freeze up for the duration of that outage, which is annoying for you and for whoever you're talking to. Well, there you have it, my experience with installing the SpaceX Starlink system and a few days of experience using it. The pros, pretty easy to install, especially with the automatic dish aiming. And the speed is amazing. The cons, well, you get these occasional outages. There's a few technical gaps for us pro users. And of course, it's not cheap. I hope you've found this video interesting and helpful if you're thinking of getting the Starlink satellite internet system. Thanks for watching.